Well, joining us now to discuss this further is the Conservative Councillor for Epping and Thaden, Holly Whitbread. Uh, good morning to you, morning. Holly. Is this something that you recognise in your own local authority? Mm. So, well, we have two, uh, two hotels in our area being used for this purpose. We don't have the same issues with homelessness and rough sleeping. So, actually, I'm the Cabinet Member for Housing in Epping Forest in Essex. And whilst we have challenges around homelessness and we have had rough sleepers in the past, we don't have the, the, the same level of issues, although homelessness is always a pressing, pressing issue, particularly with the cost of living crisis mm. as well. The, the, there's no greater issue, I think, politically at the moment, that cuts at the heart of the issue mm. than seeing British veterans on the streets like that at the expense of illegals who are coming in. How dangerous and damaging is this for the Conservative Party at the moment? Well, I agree it's a massive issue that needs to be tackled and needs to be sorted out. I mean, in terms of rough sleeping in particular, there are many kind of complex reasons and it is often difficult to, to get people off the streets. And I know there are many issues around that and something my officers deal with on a, on a daily basis. Um, but, yeah, it's a huge issue and it needs sorting out. And we had the deal just the other week with France, but obviously it's going to take a long time for that to get through the system and actually see, see some delivery on it. Yeah, I think it's important you make that point because it isn't as simple as basically going out onto the street and offering those rough sleepers mm -hmm. and ex-vets, whoever they may be, and our hearts go out to them, yeah. the accommodation, because that has been tried. Yeah. And as you say, there are many complex problems in, linked to addiction mm -hmm. uh, and erratic behaviour, which makes it very, very hard to help yeah. people get back into some semblance of, of normality. Mm -hmm. That being said, you know, it is really, as you say, electorally unfortunate yeah. to see in a place like Blackpool, which is, you know, sort of emblematic of the UK, isn't yeah. it, with the, with the tower and everything, the two things. Will this be, do you think, a big sort of fighting ground during the election in two years' time? I think it's a really important issue. And I mean, that's seen it in my own area and the pressure it has on local infrastructure, whether it be GP, uh, school places, it's something that needs to be sorted out. It's not a sustainable uh, situation. Mm. To be fair to the government, I think they've acknowledged that, but it's been going on for a long time now and we really need to... I mean, processing needs to be sped up. Um, we saw the, the closure of Manston, actually, yeah. um, obviously dispersed around the country, but it's something that the government has to tackle. That's worth pointing out that Blackpool is a Labour majority council, mm -hmm. so not just having yeah. a go at the Conservatives, but there is an issue. Um, we're, we're seeing resignations mm -hmm. uh, forthcoming within the Conservative Party, more and more outspoken rebels, places like Peterborough, Ipswich, Dudley North, Bassett Law, Lee Anderson is leading a bit of a rebel movement. This is an issue that could really, really divide the Conservative Party, isn't it? I think where um, this issue is affecting communities and constituencies, MPs are rightly going to speak out and represent uh, their constituents. So as I, I mentioned, there's various kind of infrastructural pressures on uh, local areas, and it's right that MPs kind of stick up for their local area. And do you feel as though the government's got a grip of the problem of, of channel crossings? Ms Suella Braverman, the Home Secretary, is going to be facing a select committee today mm. um, and be questioned about uh, her latest decisions. And as we know, more money to be given to the French. For the first time, there'll be yeah. uh, British border force uh, personnel on French sovereign territory trying to help tackle the problem and increase of those beach patrols. Mm. Um, do you feel hopeful that this, as we see, record numbers, 40,000, this year, that, that this is going to be sorted underneath mm. Rishi Sunak and Suella Braverman? Well, I think it's a start, um, but I think there's a lot more to do. And actually, we have seen some progress in terms of stopping those kind of illegal crossings. And there, there is data to show that. Although, obviously, we want to see that here in the UK, less hotels being used, quicker processing. So it's a start, but I think the government recognise that it's going to be a real challenge and there's a lot to do around it. And actually, there's no easy answer. I think tackling those illegal gangs overseas is really important. Um, but we need to see the results here in the UK. I just think it really feels, especially with GB News viewers, I mean, they always, always really light up the airways when we talk about this. It really, really gets them going. It wrangles this idea of seeing veterans on the street like that. It's, it's heartbreaking, mm -hmm. really, to see, to see where we are. And, and kudos to you for coming on to have the guts to face the music, because this is a really difficult situation. But there isn't an end in sight, is there? I mean, we have open borders, ostensibly. Well, I, I mean, I, I welcome the government's action last week. And as I said, the government recognised the challenges around this. There's a whole kind of diplomatic side to this and working with the French to really tackle those illegal crossings at the source. Mm. That is really important. But also in terms of our processing in the UK, clearly this needs to be sped up. Um, obviously, it's challenging. You've got people destroying their identity. So um, there's no easy answers, but I, I welcome the government's proactive action on this. And I mean, Suella Braverman is talking the right talk. Hopefully we see some delivery as well.
Um, I suppose also one of the big challenges that the government have to do is to tackle, to differentiate those people who are genuinely mm. seeking asylum, those people who are coming to our country. And we have a proud history of yeah. offering refuge to people who are fleeing war and persecution, mm -hmm. you know, right through from, from the 50s, the Hungarians uh, and the Czechs fleeing Soviet oppression, the Ugandans and the Asians in the 70s. But then those who are coming here as economic migrants, as we know, the Albanians making 60 percent of the uh, illegal um, mm. crossings during the summer. And, and it's a challenge to separate those two. And therefore, yeah. people who will be voting the election yeah. conflate the two and see all mm. of these people filling the hotels as people are coming on the ground and using our resources. Mm. But many of them, some of them legitimately need our support and rightly so. Yeah, I mean, the, the government have you know, various schemes, the, the, the Ukrainian scheme and the Afghan scheme, mm -hmm. legal routes for refugees to come in, rightly so, and get the support that they, they need and the refuge they need. I think what is really important is to stop these da dangerous illegal mm -hmm. crossings, because actually refugees using this illegal route are, you know, putting their own lives at danger as well. Yeah. Now, finally, um, yesterday, Keir Starmer, an unlikely mm -hmm. tough talk yeah. on clamping down on immigration, so much so that Nigel Farage said he agreed with every word he said. <laughs> now, um, do you think that the situation would be any better under Keir Starmer, or do you think it would get worse? Well, he's changed his tune pretty quickly. I think quite on social media last night, a load of tweets from just a, a year ago where he was kind of very uh, sympathetic around some of these illegal crossings were brought up. So I think he's changed the tune to kind of fit in with the mood of the electorate. Um, so uh, that's what I'd say about that.